then you would probably find that you have to book your appointment six months in advance, it would cost you a ton. So this is what we're trying to do when we meet connectivity. Everyone wants to go very quickly. We have a couple of very famous unicorns on the stage. The question every startup asks is, when do I become a unicorn? Now that's not the usual first question to ask, but it's obviously a dream and an aspiration. But the idea is that we need to create an enabling structure where there is an ecosystem that enables that growth to happen at a very quick rate. And Karnataka's vision is to make that happen. You heard even the Chief Minister talk about convergence. He talked about the place at which, the crossroad at which creativity and technology meets. And I think this industry is the demonstration of where that app happens. And there is no better way of talking about that than to look at what you're going to be seeing in these different halls over the next few days. People can go further by working together, and this event is very much about a collaboration. We're deeply, deeply thankful to, first of all, all the studios here that have built an ecosystem. Almost every animation, every games company reaches out and works with people in other companies. If you look at 95% of the animation created for television in the world, it is done through more than two com companies working in more than two countries. And there's a fantastic opportunity. We have Mr. Prithul Kumar and we have Invest India here to talk about how, how India is going to be creating incentives. And those are available today for those folks who want to form a consortium, to form a co-production across the world. Every, every event usually has people that work in silos. I'm very happy to tell you that the chairs that we've had for gaming, animation, visual effects, comics, and uh, technology and emerging tech have worked to make this conference really and truly successful. It's not been easy, but we made, came together in two magical weeks and everyone put their shoulder to the wheel and we have AIGF and FIFS and IGDS and SOGI and Twaga and Asifa and SEC and MESC and, and the list goes on and, and you can see all those names out there. And we are deeply honored as ABI to be able to, to, be, to be part and to bring this consortium together to celebrate, to connect, to catapult and do all the things that will make the perfect wheel. Finally, people ask, what is the government's role in creating industry growth? And I think it's very important to connect this to something like a carburetor, which actually all it does is to ensure that there's a proper mixture of, of fuel in order to drive that further. And I think what we are being able to do with the, with the central government and with the state government as an industry is very important because we are creating that proper moment of combustion between what is good for business and what is good for people. And that is the role of government, to actually make sure that this fuel mixture can drive things forward. I'm going to also talk about the fact, and we're going to see that through the conference, you already heard from Madam Secretary, as well as from the Chief Minister, that we, are, we finished industry consultation for our draft third policy, and we were the first to come out with the first one. You'll hear much more about that from Shri Priyank Kargeji during his, uh, during his delivery at the valedictory on the 31st evening. A very brief glimpse, I won't play the full video, it's two minutes long, but this is the ABI Center of Excellence. No country in Asia was able to build what we have created here. We've been able in the last three years to create the digital human. We've been able to create the movies, games, and everything that you can see in it. What you're seeing here is unreal at its real best.
for you. Congratulations to the entire team here. Building the facility is so awesome and looking forward to doing a lot more work with you. Just a quick shout out to ABC Center of Excellence in Bangalore. The whole team was amazing, very, very professional. Such a fountain head of technology in one location. I wish you do more improvements and make India proud. Thank you. What drives a television channel? What makes people play a game? How do you see success in the movie theaters? It is the quality of the content. And the story must shoot an arrow simultaneously into your head and your heart. And the content is programming and it decides the success of everything. I'd like to thank everyone from all the associations, all the people that worked to create the content for you for these three days. But I think what we are trying to do here is to inspire the next generation of storytellers and creators because influences and we need to shape the narrative of how we are going forward, both locally and domestically, as well as globally. If you look at the posters here, you have never seen any place in the world that has been able to produce as much content as we've had from Karnataka. The best movies from the Kannada film industry the best movies from the South Indian film industry, the best movies from the Indian film industry, and all of the movies that are shaking the world in terms of their Oscars. So can we just have a very big round for all the creators that make all this fantastic stuff happen? Finally, creativity. We are looking at the brand India story. We are looking at the brand Karnataka story. We don't want to just create a showcase. We want to actually make sure that we create in India for India and we create in India for the world. And we believe that Bengaluru GAFX can, in a sense, join all the other large events that we take to the world to make this really an ambassador for Indian creativity. There's a lot of emphasis being done in skills. We have a whole zone with MESC that is actually going to make sure we have the ministers both from ITBT as well as from skills and entrepreneurship and higher education that are meeting weekly over the last few months in order to ideate and create what will happen in the new technologies of the future. And many of the folks on the stage, Sai and many others, are very much part of that driving force. And we're going to make sure that those 30,000 jobs that were talked about by the CM in his speech become a reality in Karnataka over the next couple of years. So, You are going to meet all of these amazing people who have flown down with 10 days notice here with you, many in the room. Thank you very much for making it. Uh, if you're awake after jet lag, we're going to make sure that you have the most vibrant time in the next couple of days. And besides that, we wanted to recognize 100 people. We think that it takes a whole village to make a community. And we very uh, arbitrarily sat with two, three seniors, Ashish, myself, and a few others, and we said, hey, let's use this opportunity for Bengaluru GFX to recognize the pioneers, the catalysts, the policy makers, the skills and education champions, the gaming champions, the startup, the VFX folks, animation, comics, and emerging tech. I can assure you that when we meet here on the 26th to 28th of February, 2025, yes, you heard it here first, on the 26th to 28th February 2025, you will actually see a more formal award ceremony. But in the meanwhile, really happy that our folks at Pickle and the whole group put this together. A big hand for the 100 trailblazers, please. So that's the wheel. Eight Cs give you the whole picture of what we are doing. 1,500 attendees, 130 speakers, 50 sessions, panels, master classes, 10 different countries, policy speakers, round tables on policy, B2B, sketch alley. There's a lovely sketch alley where you're going to see three different uh, models create, uh, you know, how illustration really starts. This is a catalyst for transformation and change. Uh, we're going to be bigger, better, and bolder, working together with the Ministry of ITBT. I want to thank the Secretary, the Director, and everyone in the ITBT team for making this spectacular. Can't thank enough the CM and the Deputy CM and all the guests of honor at this event. So thank you very much for being here. Have a great time. Have a great three days. Thank you.
Thank you, thank you so much, Mr. Biren, for uh, kick-starting the journey for us. Uh, I would now uh, like to introduce a dynamic personality who leads the organization of Invest India. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my privilege to invite onto the dais and to say a few words. Please put your hands together for uh, Ms. Nibruti Roy, our managing director for Invest India. Please, a bigger round of applause, ladies and gentlemen. It is a very tough uh, position to be in after Biren has shown such exciting videos, such a fantastic dream. I have become a dreamer. I want to start with, you know, this industry, media and entertainment. From India's perspective, is about $26 billion. Within this $26 billion, about 80% of it comes from television, comes from digital media, comes from print media. So if you look at television, it's about 9 billion, uh, digital media is 7, and 3 respectively print and online game. I must tell you, over the last 20 years, what happened? Over the last 20 years, while the world was building physical infrastructure, India was focusing on digital. India said, sports is good. How about e-sport? Print media is good. How about digital media? To be able to do that, what did India do? India drove a lot many innovations. One of the things that I can say is, Today, if I look at per GB cost, India is the cheapest, 13 cents as compared to the global average, which is about $3.5. In some countries, it goes to even as high as $6. So what India did is drive innovation through public sector undertaking as well as private sector. to get our per GB cost down to in cents. As a result, per month, we started consuming a lot of data. On an average, we consume about 20 GB a month as compared to the world that consumes 12 GB. So we are about 50% more in consumption. And I can also tell you the last thing, is if I look at the summation data all over the world, India is consuming 25% of it. Now in this consumption, so I started telling you where are we making the $26 billion money? It was coming from television, it was coming from digital media, it's coming from online gaming, and it's also coming from print media. The next one that's very exciting for me is the area where we are looking at animation and VFX, visual effects. Today, I can tell you that that industry is about 3 billion. And my team was telling me, just two years ago, this industry was 1.5 billion. Today, it's more than 3. I can also tell you that 26 billion media and entertainment today in the year 2025 will become 35 billion and just a very quick math in three years we move from 26 to 35 if i look at the cadre it's a little more than 10 10 percent and you heard from Biren and you heard from our secretary that many of the sub industries are growing even more 16 percent 18 percent 25 percent 35 percent but if I take the modest 10%-ish gather, 20, uh, 25, we will be 35 billion, but just doing the simple math of a gather of 10%, by the year 2030, we would have 
more than doubled this industry from today. That's the opportunity. So I've talked about the economics, I've talked about the use case. Let me tell you one more thing. Our nation today houses 500 million workers. Do you know that 10% of them are software? About 5 million. Of the 5 million, the gamers are only 20,000 or 30,000. Most of the gaming is leveraging software on the smartest hardware. Till I joined Invest India four and a half, five months ago, I was behind trying to work on AI accelerators, trying to work on graphics, trying to work on compute, trying to work on platforms that enable software to build these games. We have tremendous opportunity because five million software and 20,000 gamers, there's a big gap. Despite that, let me tell you, from audio video services perspective, we contribute 2% for the world. You know, last year we had 800 million-ish export. Year before that was also 800 million-ish. So we are contributing 2%. Let me tell you, in the space of animation and visual effects, we are contributing 10%. The dream that I want all of us to dream together is if our nation houses 20% of the people, which means data, which means AI, which means amazing graphics, which means amazing animation. My dream is everything that we go deliver from export or products, it's got to be at least a 20%. 10% is great, 2% is great. But the dream is 20% or more. In some cases, imagine 5 million software Developers in India has given India a name that India is synonymous to software. Imagine with all of the COEs that we are building in our nation. I was so happy when my team told me Karnataka has a great COE. Wonderful. But they also told me uh, Mizoram and uh, what other state? Meghale. Mizoram, Meghale have COEs. Sikkim is do doing, learning so many things from Karnataka. Sikkim is, you know, amping up. So if 5 million software developers can make India synonymous to a software nation, a nation defining the software, imagine what these COEs can do. We, with the digital infrastructure, we, with the software capabilities, we, with the hunger, with all our COEs to drive skilling, imagine what we could do. If we can make our data cost 13 cents, when the rest of the world is, you know, 3.5 or more, imagine what we can do in this gaming industry. Believe me, when one of the guys this morning told me, oh, Karnataka does a lot of back-end, and he was very excited. I'm saying, no, my dream is Karnataka is going to do the front end. What does it take to do the front end? It takes our amazing software developers. It takes content. It takes stories. It takes heroes. Can I tell you that our history documented is 3,000 years and many of the history is 5,000, 7,000 years that we may not have document but good proof? So 7,000 years of historical heroes, 7,000 years of fantastic architecture. I really feel we have content, we have stories to tell. And I'm really happy about Shruti Ghosh building Raji, building stories from Mahabharata and Ramayana, building stories of those heroes that the world is accepting. The Chota Bheem, my team told me, while, you know, our own ETT, OTT loves Chot Chota Bheem, but Japan has a version of Chota Bheem that they love. Our heroes are global heroes. So why back end? We have ideas, we have IPs, we are showcasing 
I want Karnataka, I want India to be the front end of gaming developer industry. To be the front end, we've got to have a supportive government. To be the supportive government, the way I look at government's role is like I am a mother at my home. I remove obstacles in front of my children's path so they can climb the highest, they can shine the brightest. And I now as Invest India, as the nation's investment promotion agency, helping look at trade and R&D, I commit to partnering with Karnataka and help Karnataka become the front end of the gaming industry. I am really thankful to be here. Um, phones have made a lot of things easier. Today, India is using 90% of the device to consume a lot of these gaming contents, the digital contents. The world uses 50%. I am looking forward to driving hardware software innovations, to working with you and building policies that the amazing youth, when I walked in, this conference was full of youth. And I said, this is India. This is the young India who can drive leadership in the digital gaming content, the imaginary world, and create value for India. I really believe this is a low-hanging fruit. And all you gamers out there, I really feel it's not just for entertainment, it's for education. And me as ex Inter India, I can tell you, we train more than 3 million people. Back then it was 3, maybe now it's 4 or 5, I don't know. Based on an AI education program using games. So I'm looking at tourism to benefit from you. I'm looking at education to benefit from you. So looking forward to doing amazing things with you. And I am committed as, as Invest India and we're going to establish our office here. Great going uh, GAFX team. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for that powerful speech. It's always a great pleasure to hear you speak. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's my honor and privilege of introducing our distinguished leader, who I have to say is the driving force right now in our uh, state. His tenure as our Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka has been marked by initiatives that has been aimed at fostering economic growth social welfare and infrastructure development in the state. So ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together and join me in welcoming our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka, Shri D.K. Shivkumarji. Everybody, a bigger round of applause for him, please. Good afternoon to all of you. Mr. Sharad Bachegoda, who is the chairman, newly appointed chairman of the Qonix. All the leaders of this new era, taking all of you to the global scene, members of the GFX, leaders on the dais, ladies and gentlemen, friends from the international community, media friends, and I could see young students aspiring for a great opportunity. Again, I wish you all the best on this important event. When you all are here in Bangalore, you can't distance yourself from technology completely. Everyone is connected to technology some way or other. Every third or the fourth family will have one tech, techie in their home. This is what I have seen in Bangalore. Because we have more than about 400 institutions which has developed and in every private sector or the any schools now technology, without technology no education is being taken up. As you know, I don't have a techie. If you don't have a techie, you will interact with it some of the other places. 
If you escape technology in every single place by chance, it will counter in a movie theater. This is what we are seeing today. I am really, really amazed and impressed by the sophistication of technology in our movies these days. I am proud that Bangalore is taking a lead in the world of GFX in gaming, ammunition, visual, movies, various I don't want to take the name of movies which Karnataka has already started. But we are here to just compete on the world, I know that. But our technicians and creative people in Bangalore can do compete in the world which we are looking at. You all are conjured up with a whole new integrity world with your technology. I sincerely hope that you will be able to create even more spectacular world of cinema in the days to come. While cinema gradually benefit from this technology, I urge you to look at using this technology in education, healthcare and other social sector. I know technology is making it possible for all kind of some remote village to learn complex concepts with use of gravitation, animation and virtual reality. With artificial intelligence coming into the mix, I believe our industry can do amazing work in changing the way kids learn. Our governments try to communicate a lot of messages to the people on various things. I believe there is a lot of role for your industry in putting across these messages in a very effective way. I would like to urge you to look to the government services deliver as the market creates more new products for it. I am glad that Bangalore is one of the leading players in the KFX space. Bangalore always has embraced new technologies like a magnet. There are with PSU's revolution in 1950s, 60s, 70s. Our leaders, Panjit Jawaharlal Nehru, Indira Gandhi and Rajiv Gandhi set up many mega places industries. <coughs> Bangalore embraced a natural, natural, BL, BML, ISRO, BHL and various other organizations. Then came the industrial revolution. Bangalore responded with various industrial areas the largest industrial areas in Asia also. Many other industrial estates followed after they came the IT revolution. Bangalore embraced with an open arms with the three stories today. Then they came the biotech revolution. Bangalore is the leader of this. Today the startup revolution in the Bangalore is number one and the capital of India today. I am sure you all will be embraced with this Quebec revolution too because innovation and leadership is Bangalore's blood. Bangalore's built to be is melting with a pot of technology, culture, innovation, creativity. As I believe Bangalore becomes a natural choice for your industry, as I have instigated need for your industry to flourish. I wish that the vibrant community of creators, innovators and visionaries will put us in the state in the forefront of shaping the digital entertainment landscape in the world. Our government is there to extend all possible help for your industry in all possible ways. I was discussing with my the central government officials, bureaucrats, under the leaders, what is the new policy which we are looking at. Because the central policy also has to help us. Today when we started the IT policy in last 20 years, we gave a lot of opportunity to the IT sector and that IT sector grew and today the Bangalore and Karnataka, the world is looking at Bangalore and Karnataka on this issue. So Karnataka is becoming a leader in every wave that has been in the last 40 years. Our politicians and bureaucrats have been proactive formulating policies where we have other in the state and the country. Today I think uh, my friend Mr. Priyan Kargi is not here due to his uh, personal occupation but he is trying to do his best to see that the IT, PT sector which is growing very faster to look at to the standards of the global market. Entertainment industry is not just a hard technology but a software power. Looking at the United States, how smartly they are using the Hollywood and 
the TV entertainment industry is promoting the culture, branch, dollar and even foreign policy. It is the time we use our advantage too. I am sure that the newly drafted UGC policy is going to be beneficial for our industry. Our policies have been designed to encourage innovation, attract investment and create opportunities for collaboration. We believe that AVGC industry is not just an economic delivery, but a cultural force that reflects our state commitment to the great and excellence. I was discussing with my, our officials from Karnataka and the Government of India to work out a see that we give more opportunity, more investments, more incentives to see that this industry will be more stronger. Because every year there will be a change. Every once year, two years, new changes will come. It will vanish. So that we should see that they are being strengthened. We'll have a proper foundation to make this strong. So government of India and Karnataka should be committed to support this industry. Otherwise, this government, this industry will not survive because every year we see a change in this industry and technology. In this regard, our newly draft policy, I think we have been seeing a lot of issues connected to innovations, global competitive, the policy outlines ambitious goals, creating more than 30,000 specialized jobs in 2029. I am sure, I think, on the last day, we are coming with a new policy. These targets are not just numbers. They reflect our commitment to make Karnataka a global talent hub for the AVGC retained skills. This policy structure around strategic pillars and the emphasis skill development, sustained infrastructure, empowering startup and MSCs. Under this policy, we are focusing on skill development for our future ready workforce establishment centers and center of excellency. As we all agree with me that the focus of our government has been always to cultivate skills and create jobs for the state. As some of the incentive skills reimbursement in various sector, I will let me not disclose all those things. When the policy come out, definitely you will know about it. In addition to the skill development, our policies lays down a robust framework for already growth for the AVJC and extra. As I would like to let us talk on the ecosystem, which is incomplete without the early stage startups, and for them to survey the growth, we have included incentives up to 50% of the expense in the current under the marketing complex operation and leasing to give them necessary boost during the early days of operation. This historic approach of our policy has sometimes incurred for the companies at early stage and incentives like reimbursement and the production grants, gaming development, market access and quality assurance are something which the industry will appreciate and can impede it from. We are constantly surveying to make future progress both within our state and on the national stage. I believe this policy which is going to come will pay way for building relations and preparing for the challenges that lie ahead. This event is not just gathering of professionals. It is a celebration of creativity as conscious of the dreams and a testament in the limitless possibilities that lies ahead. I encourage you all to engage, collaborate and inspire one or other way to course of this conference and be a part of existing session that has been planned. Anyway, today I could see young, new, bright faces. I want you to involve institutions, industries, education institutions, technological institutions. From the younger days, our student has to be involved in this because to make everyone successful, be happy, this industry has to grow stronger. The more you make stronger, the industry, entire section, as Bangalore is the up of technology in various factors, I think you will have a good success story. I wish you all the best for having participated. I thank my government officials, the organizers, and all the private players who have been joined to be a part of this great event. I wish you all the best. I think this GIFX will strengthen India growth and compete in the world era. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Your words 
our inspirational and a huge support for us. If I could request Mr. Biren Ghosh and uh, Dr. Ekrub Kaur to please do the honors and uh, present a small token of gratitude from our entire Bengaluru Gafix team to our Honorable Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka, Shri D. Keshav Kumarji. Thank you. A token of gratitude uh, to Shri Sharad Bache Gaudanji for uh, taking time out of his busy schedule and being here with us today. Small token of gratitude uh, to Miss uh, Nirvati Rai. We would like to extend our uh, thank you and gratitude to all of our uh, dignitaries who are on stage with us. And to now officially conclude the inauguration and present the vote of thanks, I would invite uh, Mr. R.K. Chand, Secretary Abai, to please join us on stage and do the honours. I would uh, request Mr. Rockline Venkatesh, sir, I would request you to please join us on stage. Mr. Rockline Venkatesh, of course, has been uh, very silently uh, sitting right in front. Ladies and gentlemen, a huge round of applause, please, for uh, one of the big backbone for our uh, Kannada movie industry. Great producer. Thank you so much, sir. Your uh, support means a lot. Can we all have a cheer for GAFX, please? <laughs> On behalf of Abai, I extend a heartfelt note of thanks to all those who have contributed on the success of this momentous occasion today. Thank you so much, all dignitaries on the stage. Thank you so much, uh, Honorable Chief Minister Shri Siddhamaji, who, who could be here. Thank you so much, uh, Shri D.K. Kumar. Thank you, uh, Shri Sadhvachya Godaji. Thank you so much, uh, Shri Rizwan, who could be here for a while. Thank you, Shri Pritam Kumar, sir. Thank you, Mr. Uh, Chris Kopalakrishnan, Mr. Rajan Navani, Ashish Kulkarni, Mr. Sai, and Mr. Sudhir Kang. I would like to especially thank also uh, Mr. Niruti to be here, and uh, a special thanks to our secretary, ma'am, and uh, Shri Darshan, sir, R&D for helping us in putting this all together in such a short while. I would also like to have my gratitude sent across to my fellow Abai Management Committee and the GAFX Organizing Committee, uh, which comprised of chairs from all four industries, as well as all the gaming association who could put the shoulder together, as Biran mentioned, to put across the show. Last but not the least, I'd like to express our thanks to each and every attendee and also to all volunteers who have come together for this event. The next three days as we embark on this exciting journey is going to bring out a big commemorate of 
lovely sessions, making offs uh, from all across the world. I would like to have the floor open now and have all of you guys to move on to the next stage after the session is over. The B2B opening will be happening in Lalit. And I would like to request Brain to accompany along with uh, Prithul Sir, Naruti Ma'am, Dr. Kaur, and uh, the white team for the B2B session after this. And I would also like to request uh, Rajan Sir and uh, Chris Sir for the gaming keynote in the Grand Ballroom will accompany you for the same. Thank you so much everyone and all of you have a wonderful evening. Over to you. Uh, if I could uh, request Mr. Uh, Miringosh and uh, Dr. Ekru Kaur to please uh, remain on stage. We have some very special guests uh, who are here with us and I would request you to please uh, join us on stage. Um, would like to present a small token of thank you. We have our Consul General of France. We have our Consul General of France in Bangalore, uh, Mr. Thierry Berthelot. If I could request you to please uh, join us on stage, sir. We have a Consul General of Italy in Bengaluru, Mr. Alfonso, uh, right here with us. If I could request you to please uh, join us on stage. We have our Councillor, Embassy of Armenia, Mr. Marat Kamelikyan. If I could request you to please join us on stage. And we have uh, our Secretary, Embassy of Cuba, Mr. Abel. So if I could request you to please join us on stage. Ladies and gentlemen, we will be continuing with our sessions right away. So I would request you all to please remain in your seats. And if you could have a huge round of applause uh, for all of our dignitaries who have uh, come in uh, for our Bengaluru Graphics 2024. Thank you so much, gentlemen. Your presence has made a huge difference for us this morning. Thank you.